Good morning! In this video, I'm going to go over the correct way to export your character from Character Creator 4. We're also going to go over the correct way to export an animation from iClone 8. Then we're going to import these into Unreal Engine 5, where we're going to combine them and then bind the animation to the new CC control rig. So let's have a look! I've marked everything with timestamps down below if you want to skip to a specific chapter. So here I have my character. This is Amber from the La Familia pack. The first thing you want to do is head over to File, and then Export, and then FBX, Clothed Character. Here you can choose from a bunch of presets, uh, depending on which software you're going to. And today we're going to Unreal Engine. So we're going to select Unreal. And on the uh, sun icon here, we can see more advanced uh, export settings. I'm going to select only the mesh, because we're going to do the animation from iClone. You don't have to embed the textures, uh, we want them separate from the FBX file. What you can do, however, is to check the uh, delete hidden faces, in case you have clothed your character, and then hidden the uh, faces underneath the clothes. So here the faces are hidden uh, on the leg mesh to avoid it poking through. Also, we want to check uh, use subdivided mesh to get the smoothest mesh possible. Under the advanced settings, as it's set up for Unreal Engine, we don't have to do that much. Uh, the only thing I want to do is I prefer to uh, always work with T-poses. So I'm going to change the bind pose as the T-pose, then simply hit export and choose a location. I recommend uh, creating version folders in case you need to iterate on your character. So I'm going to create a version 1 and then a version 2 and then export the character into the corresponding version number. Next up, and this is optional, if you want to send your character to iClone, we can once again head over to File, Export and then use Send to iClone, Send to iClone. And this will send our cloned character to iClone, so we can then animate it in iClone using the various animation tools at your disposal here. Like a chef in a cooking show, I've already prepared the next step. So I've already gone ahead and imported an environment into iClone, and then animated my character just for demonstrational purposes. You can also see that we have an animated face, which we're also going to export into Unreal Engine. We'll come back to iClone later on. You could just set up all of the shaders in Unreal Engine yourself. However, we're going to save a lot of time using the auto setup for Unreal Engine created by Relution to assist us in creating all the shaders in basically a one-click solution. This is a plugin which is free, uh, so I'll link the download down below. So you can use it for every time you export a character from Character Creator to Unreal Engine. When you've installed it, you can find it up here in the plugins, character creator auto setup, and then browse files. Here you'll find a folder called Unreal. Select whichever version you're using, copy the content and plugins folder, and then paste them into your project folder of the uh, Unreal Engine project that you're working on. Restart the engine. You can now see that it has found new plugins. Search for Auto and it has enabled the plugin for you. And you perhaps need to restart the engine once more. It's time to import the character. So let's right click in the content browser and create a folder called underscore characters. And then a new one called Amber. And then in here also a version folder if you need to re-import and do some adjusting and tweaking. When this window pops up, I recommend leaving it on the high quality shader, which basically gives you the most options when tweaking the shaders after import. In the FBX import options window, we can make sure to reset everything to default, and then toggle down the advanced tab, and check use time zero as reference pose, and import morph targets. These two checkboxes are extremely important to make sure that you have enabled every time you import a CC4 character into Unreal Engine. Here we now have our character in a standing T-pose. So we can go ahead and have a look at it. 
to make sure that everything has loaded and imported correctly. And as you can see, it looks fantastic. Once again, I'm going to skip forward in time a bit. I'm going to create a basic three point lighting setup with a white wall and a backdrop. Here you can see my lighting setup. And if we jump into the camera view, this is my setup. Next up, we're going to export the animation from iClone. So let's pretend for a second that you have done your animation in an imported environment. Uh, perhaps you've animated on top of a skyscraper, for example. So here I've done that scenario where I've animated my character and done all the work way above the uh, world origin. And we obviously want to keep that offset so we don't have to reposition uh, Amber in Unreal Engine. First, select the in and out points. You can do that very easily by hitting the set start and end frame to current selection. Select Amber, head over to File, Export, FBX. We want to select the range and it will automatically set the range for us. You can go ahead and uncheck everything here because we only want the motion from this export and we don't really care about the mesh. The important step is to go into the advanced settings, disabling the embed motion, which is basically just a T pose and a pose. This is unnecessary data. We also want to make sure that reset motion root is disabled. That way we can keep the offset from the world origin so Amber stays in place on top of the skyscraper that we animated on top of. Then we can go ahead and export this. I'll name this to sequence one underscore Amber version one. In case we need to iterate. I find version numbers very important when doing exports and imports to keep track of the changes that I've done. A great new feature is the CC control rig. We're going to need it for this workflow. Head over to the Epic Games Marketplace and then search for control rig. It's a free plugin, so just make sure to download it and install it to the engine version that you're currently using. For me, it's 5.3. Then we want to enable this plugin. Head over to settings and then plugins, search for control rig and make sure that you tick the box for enable character Character Creator UE Control Rig. Restart the engine. When this is enabled, you can right click on your skeletal mesh and then choose Create CC Control Rig. And it will create a control rig for you and bind it to your character. In the rigs folder, we now have a CC underscore rig underscore blueprint. I would suggest renaming this. Now it's time to create the master sequence that we're going to combine everything into. So let's create a new folder called underscore sequences. Then we'll create a level sequence called level sequence underscore sequence one underscore amber. I'm doing my animation in 25 FPS, so I'm going to change my FPS down here to 25. Let's drag in our blueprint actor into the sequencer. And we can already give the uh, control rig a try by selecting a control point and then moving it around. Now we're almost at the finish line. We're going to import our custom Amber animation from iClone. Let's create a new folder in the Amber folder and we'll name this animations. Let's drag in the FPX we exported from iClone. When the shader window pops up, you can select whatever here because we won't import the actual mesh. We only want the animation data. So make sure that you uncheck import mesh. And then we need to reassign this animation data to a new skeleton. So in this case, we're going to assign it to the Amber skeleton so we can use it with our Amber character. Under the advanced tab, we can select a custom sample rate. Uh, this is the FPS that you're working on. So in my case, I'm going to select 25 FPS and then I'm also going to select the snap to closest frame uh, in order to avoid any frame blending issues. And then let's import it. Let's jump into our master sequence. We'll temporarily remove the control rig. Let's select the plus icon here and select the body component. On the body component, we're going to attach an animation track and we're going to assign our new Amber animation. Perhaps you're wondering where Amber went and it's simply because we animated Amber in iClone on top of a skyscraper. So in Unreal, she is now also on top of that skyscraper so if we just go up in our scene, we can find Amber again. Let's select the cinematic viewport down here on the animation track. 
we can see our animation is 2108 frames. So select the same number as our playback range. We now have both our CC4 character as well as our iClone animation in Unreal Engine 5. The face is driven by our custom blend shapes and also have a video on how you can create new blend shapes in Character Creator 4 using Blender if you're interested in learning that skill. The final step is to rebake our animation data on top of the control rig so we can do adjustments like adding an animation layer if you want to tweak the animation. Let's select the body, right click and choose bake to control rig, CC body rig and simply hit create. This will bake the animation down to a control rig so we can now uh, do some further tweaking if necessary. This step applies to the face and face rig as well. I hope you found the information in this video helpful. As always, let me know if you have any questions down below and I will try to answer them as quickly as possible. I have some really exciting videos about characters in Unreal Engine 5 coming up, so make sure to hit subscribe to not miss any of those. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye. In case you like this video, then you might perhaps like this video.